Hello mga katropang guro and welcome to our discussion on the sampling techniques. These sampling techniques will teach us how to determine the right sample and of course the right participants with the right size for our research. So there are two types of sampling techniques that we will be discussing today. First is of course the probability sampling and the second one is non-probability sampling. So when we say probability sampling, it involves random selection, allowing members of the population to have a known chance of being selected or being part of the participants. It is also called a statistical sampling. The next is of course non-probability sampling. It involves non-random selection based on convenience or other criteria that will be set by the researcher for his research allowing the researcher to easily collect initial data. It is also called non-statistical sampling. So these are the sampling techniques, particularly the types of non-probability and probability sampling techniques. We have under non-probability, we have snowball, convenience, quota, purposive, voluntary. And then under probability, we have simple random, systematic, stratified, and clustered. So I will be discussing these sampling techniques. Let's start with probability sampling. First, simple random sampling. In this sampling technique, each member of the population has an equal chance or probability of being selected. And one way of obtaining a random sample is to give each member a number, then pick one at random until such time that you would be able to identify the participants considering your desired number of participants, based of course on the right size and right members. So in determining the right size, we can make use of Slovin's formula. Another example is to put the names of the students in a hat or members of the population will be given numbers. So they, they will be labeled. And then you have to pick one at a time until you reach the desired number of participants. So that's simple random sampling. All you need to do is to put all the names of the Population, for example, you have 40 students. You put all the names of your students and then you pick one at a time until such time that you would be able to reach your desired number of students who will be part of your research. Next is systematic sampling. In this sampling technique, participants are selected at regular intervals from the population. For example, letter, capital letter N is of course the population divided by the sample, which is small letter N, is equal to the nth. A system is followed in this particular sampling technique to identify the participants from the population. If you need the sample N from population N, capital letter N, you should select every N divided by N individual for the sample. For example, if you want a sample size of 5 from a population of 100, then you need to select every 100 divided by 5, which is equal to 20th member of the population. So from the 100 members of the population, every 20th will be chosen. 20th, 40th, 60th, 80th, and then of course, the 100th member of the population. So those will be the participants of your research. So that is systematic sampling. For example, if you have five sections, and then you might want to choose every fifth in the class. 
for every section. So that means you would be choosing the 5th, the 10th, the 15th, the 20th for each section until such time that you would be able to reach your desired number of participants. Next is stratified sampling. All you need to do is to regroup the population into at least two strata that share the same characteristics. Then pick a sample from its stratum. So singular of strata is stratum. It is used when we expect the data we gather from the participants vary between the different subgroups and we want to ensure representation from all the subgroups. Example is, of course, subdividing the population into women group and, of course, the men group to ensure equal representation from its group because you are considering the characteristics of men and, of course, the characteristics of women. But it's also possible to choose non-equal participants from its stratum. For example, in a study of the perception of teachers in online teaching, if there are three schools, each with different numbers of teachers, school X has 100 teachers, school Y has 400, and then school D has 500, then it would be appropriate for you as a researcher to choose the sample numbers from each school proportionally. Example, 10 from school X, 40 from school Y, and 50 from school Z. So that's how we use stratified sampling technique. Next under probability sampling is cluster sampling. The population is divided into groups called clusters and are used as sampling unit. Remember, a sampling unit. So there are two things that should be considered in cluster sampling, stage 1 and stage 2. For single stage, the stage 1, all members of the chosen clusters or cluster will be included in the research study. For example, if you have five clusters and using simple random sampling, picking one from the five clusters, you were able to pick cluster one. So that means all the members under cluster one will be your participants in your research. So that is single stage. You will use simple random to choose from the clusters then all the members of the cluster chosen will be part of the study. Next is two-stage cluster sampling. A selection of individuals from each cluster is then randomly selected for inclusion. For example, you have five clusters. Then all the members of each cluster will be part of the study if and only if they will be chosen. So the two-stage cluster sampling, a selection of individuals from each cluster is then randomly selected for inclusion. Then you will use simple random sampling to choose the members for each cluster to be part of the research study until such time that you would be able to reach your desired number of participants the right size. Let's proceed now to non-probability sampling. The first one is snowball. Here, the sample participants nominate others to be part of the sample. That means the participants that you have chosen when you are doing your research can provide additional respondents for the research being conducted because there will be times that you wouldn't be able to identify a particular participant for your research. And because the first participant knows the criteria, then he can provide you with another participant. Maybe he knows someone 
could provide you with the with the same data that you need or simply considering the criteria that you have set for your research or for your participants then the first participant can nominate another participant for your research so that is a snowball sampling technique so remember this is non-probability sampling and non-probability sampling will be used for qualitative research while for probability sampling it will be used for quantitative research so please take note that when we talk of non-probability sampling the sampling technique should be used for qualitative research the next non-probability sampling is convenience here the participants are selected based on availability and willingness to take part therefore the members of the population are eligible to be the sample but only those who responded are counted especially those who are willing so that means you have to use the participants who are available and willing to take part in your research next is purposive sampling this is again another type of non-probability sampling which of course often be used for qualitative research here the participants are the samples based on the preconceived purpose this is also called as judgment or purposive sampling technique it is also known as selective subjective or judgment sampling because it relies on the judgment of the researcher when choosing the participants when you do this you have to create your criteria in choosing your participants to avoid bias and in order for you to choose the right sample, the right participants in your research. This will make sure that you would be able to gather the data that you need for your research. The last but not the least, under non-probability sampling, we have quota. Here, you have to keep going until the sample size is reached. It is used actually to ensure desired proportion of different responded classes. Researchers set the quota needed for his research. So therefore, as a researcher, remember always that the quota chosen should be proportionally represent the characteristics of the underlying population in order for you to get your desired data. You might want as well to set the percentage. For example, 50% of the total population will be your participants. But remember always that all the members of that population should be the, the participants that you really need for your research. Could also be 80% or 100%. Okay. But of course, if it is 100%, then you would be considering all the num all the members all the members in the population so that's quota sampling it is a non probability sampling again i really would like you to remember this when we talk of non probability sampling we are actually talking about non statistical sampling and the sampling techniques should be used for qualitative research. So when we talk of probability sampling, we are actually talking about statistical sampling technique. And those sampling techniques should be used for quantitative research. Thank you mga katropang guro and God bless.